I notice the water in the wetlands gets deeper as you move away from the shore. I notice a squirrel standing very still, looking at me. I notice another squirrel jumping over the leaves and branches. I notice the squirrel's eye is very large and on the side of her head. I notice many telephone wires and power lines crossing the road in front of the view of Mount Tam. I notice a bridge and a marina with boats in the bay. I notice two flat boats anchored in the bay. I notice branches of the big oak tree cast shadows on the road. Good morning, my environmental detective friends. Looking forward to doing some new investigations and detective work with you. Let's go find clues right here in our own neighborhood environment. Hi Duke and hi my environmental detective friends. Wild Chives here and today we're back in Pickleweed Park but this time we're on the other side of the library and if you can see behind me we're right near the wetlands and so I'm so excited we're going to do so many different things today. We're going to be watching our baby squirrels uh, video again. We're going to be visiting our friends at Youth and Arts and they're going to be showing us how we can draw different kinds of lines to better support us in our sketching when we make our observations in our sit spot. And we're also um, going to visit Sunshine and be in her sit spot with her. So the last time we saw each other, we got to see these two squirrels in their very large cage. And we started making observations and sketches about these squirrels. So now I want to be thinking about, as I'm using my notebook and making observations, I want to think about how am I describing these squirrels? What am I doing so that I remember what I saw? I need a little memory boost. Let's take a moment to watch our squirrels again. So those squirrels definitely have me working in my notebook. And as I'm in here drawing, and I go to my sit spot every single day, I'm finding that I'm not knowing where to begin with my sketches. Do, how do I even start to draw what I see? I'm getting my words because of our lists, but I don't know where to begin with my sketches. I think it's something, let's learn more about that. Let's join Youth and Arts and let's explore lines and sketching. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for the first in our series of Observing Nature journal videos. We're going to teach you how to use your whole body to observe more, learn more, understand more, and appreciate more about where you are right now. Um, we are Youth and Arts, and these videos are something that you can do at home by yourself. We hope that you don't even need a grown-up's help. You just need a pencil and paper and um, something to put it all together in. I will be drawing on this really big pad of paper because I want you to be able to see really well. But you can also draw on a nice, fresh, clean, new journal if you want. And this is my favorite way. If you don't have a nice, clean, fresh journal, find an old book. And this is how I keep my notes. This is a journal that I kept for my school. And I love using this book because I can tape my own notes in next to pages that I want to remember in a book that I really like. You can use different kinds of paper. You can do pages from um, 
This is something design thinking process, which is really important to me. Um, this is another, my art journal, where I learn how to draw different things. I keep everything in one place, and this is an old book. This is my own nature journal where I did use some color and I was exploring just the clouds up above. I put the date in there and notes about what I was doing and experimenting with colors. And what I love about using old books is then I can use whatever paper I want. If you want to use some cool paper, this is from um, a grocery bag and it looked really good when you color on it. If you want to use different pages, you can do it and tape them into your book. We're going to start these videos looking just at lines. That's the drawing fundamental. It's where we all start and it's how you learn to look. The first thing you do is lines. So that's what we're gonna look at today and we're gonna build on each drawing fundamental as we go along. We'll do lines and patterns and textures and shapes, all kinds of different things. So please welcome, stay with us and we're gonna work through just lines today. Every day we're going to see it and the first thing you need to do is find your sit spot. What are you going to be looking at? And um, it doesn't have to seem like an exciting spot. It can be anywhere where you see something by nature and something made by people together. Um, so right here, we have a tree. We have a little brick wall. And that's all we need. Um, you can do it right on your front step. You can do it looking out the window. You can do it in your backyard. Um, wherever you can be, ideally all by yourself. You don't need a grown-up to take you to the park. You don't need anything special. Just be where you are. And that way, if you're at home, you won't have to wear your mask. If you go to the park, you are going to need to put your mask on for now. Okay, so first we're going to find our sit spot and now we're just gonna look. We're gonna see what it is that we're looking at. We're looking at this tree today and we're looking at the ground around it and the, the brick wall is there, but we're not gonna look at that right now. We're just looking at the tree for now. Um, what do you see where you are? Uh, do you see um, a brick wall? Do you see broken steps? Do you see a window frame? Do you see bugs? Do you see something like a tree? What is it you see right where you are? This is funny. The next thing we're going to look at is sense it and here comes the wind. That is something I am sensing. Um, the first thing you're going to do is to put, I'm going to write nice and big so you can see it, but you, you're going to do this in your journal however you want to do that. The first thing you're going to do is put the date on here. Today is May 1, 2020. And now you can put, um, you can use words, you can use pictures, you can use numbers to record all of this information. But now you could put the weather on here. You could put sunny and you could put, I would put windy right now and windy. Um, because I'm sensing wind right now. If you're in a place where you can touch what you're looking at, you can touch it. What do you smell? What do you hear? We just heard a car go by, all those different things. Um, so make all your notes for sensing right now. Now we're gonna move. And this is another way of sensing things. We're going to use our whole bodies for this. And for this, we have a special guest educator who is going to show us how to move based on what we see. Hi, Suzanne. Hey, Kristen. Thanks for having me. I'm going to take my mask off for a moment while we do this because I know we have a lot of friends out there where it might be helpful to see my mouth moving while I talk. So to observe the tree a little bit more, we're going to use our body. And we do that because we can observe things in a different way that maybe we didn't see when we were just sitting there looking at it. So we get up and we get some blood flowing and some oxygen and we move it with our body. We're gonna dance it together. So I'm gonna show you how to do that a little bit. You were looking at some lines and I saw that you saw um, straight 
and you saw some zigzag lines and what else did you see? A curvy. Curvy lines, great. Yeah. Let's, ex let's explore that with our body. So we're gonna first use our finger like a pencil or a crayon or a marker and we're going to air draw that tree. So let's look at that tree together and go ahead and air draw that tree right where you are and you can make you can make it as big or as small as you want at this moment and you can go do as much or as little of that tree as you'd like. <laughs> Beautiful. Alright, now we're going to expand that which means to make it much bigger. So we're going to make it feel like this tree is just huge right next to us. So let's air draw it again with our finger and expand it. Ready? Go. It gets you moving, doesn't it? Yeah, I love it. Great. Okay. Now we're going to do something a little bit different with that expanded uh, air drawing. We're going to use another choreographer's word and we're going to transpose it, which means to move it to a different body part. Instead of our finger, we're going to use our elbow and keep it really expanded. So you're really going to have to move this one. Ready? Go. Good. <laughs> Nice! Alright, we're going to do one more just to really get us moving. And we're going to transpose it one more time and this time we're going to use our nose. I know your nose is covered up by a mask but you still know where your nose is. So we're going to air draw the tree expanded really big. Ready? Go! You might have to get up on your tiptoes. You might even have to jump. Good. All right, how'd that feel? Great. Good, I yeah. hope you observed something different in the tree. I sure did. I did. All right, I'm gonna put my mask on and I'm gonna go home and I'll see you later. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, everyone. We are now ready to show it. My favorite part. This means we're going to draw right now. You're going to use whatever paper you have. I'm gonna draw nice and big so you can see it and I'm looking for just lines. All we're doing today is lines. We're not trying to make it into a picture of anything. Um, I'm gonna start with this big line of the tree and it really is just, I see some little bumps. It's not really straight. Um, there's some cracks in this tree that are a little straighter, so I'm going to put those in. Okay, because of moving, when I got up and moved and danced with my whole body, moved with my whole body, I noticed the leaves and they have a really beautiful sharp edge, which I want to get on here. Um, and this is why we do things like moving, using air drawing, drawing with our whole body is because it helps us see more and that's the goal today. I don't need to draw leaves today, but I want to draw those lines and it doesn't have to be perfect. And I also see just grass, which is just lines like this. And I see little clovers. I'm gonna put those on. And when I look really closely, I see tiny little flowers. And again, I don't need to draw the flower, I just wanna get the line on. And then there's also things like rocks down here, and those have more of a hard edge. So I'm just going to draw what kind of a line the rock is. Maybe it's even both here. And that's the drawing part today. That's the showing it for today. Okay, we have finished drawing, showing it. Now we're going to question it. And we ask a lot of questions when we do observation because it helps us find a lot of answers. It helps us see more and it helps us know more. Um, we are going to look at the lines we made and figure out what kinds of questions we would want to ask. You can write your questions down if you want. If you don't want to write, just think about your questions and we'll, we'll try to remember them later. Um, I'm curious about these lines I made that go up and down, the vertical lines. Why are these lines vertical on the tree? But then if I look down here, it's still part of the tree and this line curves around. Why do the, the lines at the bottom curve around? I don't know the answer, but maybe I can figure it out by looking more or learning more. Why? 
Are the leaves jagged edges? That's something we can figure out. Um, if I want to just remember that I asked a question, I can put a question mark on it. I asked a question about that. And if you want to just put a word on, I'm going to put zigzag on here. I'm curious about why it's a zigzag. And this one is vertical. Why vertical? So that helps me remember why the questions I, what I asked and why. Um, rocks, we could ask a question about the rocks. Why are they sharp, sharp, sharp edges, really sharp edges, while the tree is more rounded, soft, and the clover was really soft. Why is that a round edge? And things like the rocks are sharp edges. Those are all questions we could ask as we go forward. Again, you don't have to have the answers. It's just about asking the questions right now. Okay, we asked our questions. Now, it's very, very, very important to remember what you did so that you can remember the questions, you can remember the sights, you can remember the sounds. This is going to, again, help you learn more and maybe understand more and appreciate more what you have right where you are. To remember, again, we can go back to our drawing and we can compare it to what we drew. So we can remember that we asked questions about vertical lines. We can remember what we saw, that those were kind of rounded lines. We can remember that we were curious about why the rock's edges are sharp and the clover's edges are soft, rounded. Um, I can remember that a lot of cars go by the street. I can remember that it was a windy day. I can remember that these leaves are all moving wind and that there are little patches where the sun hits that move too because those leaves are moving and the sun is above it. Thank you very much for, much for joining us for our first Observing Nature journaling video and we will see you again next time. Bye bye. Friends, last time we were together, we sang our song in nature, but because we're in the wetlands today, we're going to sing it again and change the words a little bit. So instead of singing in nature, we're gonna sing in the wetlands. And then we saw many of these things in the wetlands as well. But today we saw a very specific type of bird. We saw geese. So I'm just gonna write geese down here. That's one thing I love about this song is depending on where you are, you can change the words based on what you observe. So let's sing together. You can stand up and sing along with me. In the wetlands we can see many things, many things. In the wetlands we can see many things, many things. We can see the grass, we can see the squirrels, we can see the sky, we can see the trees, we can see the branches, we can see the leaves, we can see the geese and the bees. In the wetlands we can see many things, many things. In the wetlands we can see many things, many things. We can see the grass, we can see the squirrels, we can see the sky, we can see the trees, we can see some branches, we can see the leaves, we can see the geese and the bees. Hi friends, I'm back. It's Miss French with our sentence patterning chart. Today, we're gonna add some new vocabulary that describes what the squirrels are, what they would feel like, or smell like, or look like, and the actions that they were doing, the verbs, and also the prepositional phrases. Sing with me the four parts of speech that make a complete sentence. Here we go. Adjective, adjective, noun. Adjective, adjective, noun. Adjective, adjective, noun. Verb, prepositional phrase. What does that mean? Describing word, describing word, person, place, or thing. Describing word, describing word, person, place, or thing. Describing word, describing word, person, place, or thing. Action word tells you where and when. Let's start with our adjectives. Let's review what we wrote the last time. We said squirrels are so furry. Squirrels are so gray. Squirrels are so curious. Squirrels are so 
injured. But then in this last video, I saw the squirrels were playing with each other. What's that word that describes when something likes to play? We say playful. Say it with me, playful. And I know that so many of you like to go down a slide and you would be feeling very playful when you're doing that. We'll go like this, playful. I also saw in the video that those squirrels were going and they were nibbling on some things. That makes me think that those squirrels were so, what is it when you want to eat? Hungry, say it with me, hungry. Squirrels are so hungry. Here's a picture of me with my stomach and I'm like, when am I going to eat? We'll go like this, hungry. Playful, hungry. Then we also saw in the video, the squirrels were doing some different actions. A verb is an action word. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna think, think, think. Hmm, squirrels can, there was a dish and it had water in it. The squirrels ran right up to it and the squirrels can drink. Say it and do it, drink. Here's their little cup of water. Squirrels can, I saw them moving around really fast from spot to spot. That verb is jump. Say it with me, squirrels can jump. And I'm gonna put a picture of you and you're jumping way over to a different spot. Maybe like when you played hopscotch at school. I also noticed the squirrels were doing an action with their noses, like this. Some people would say smell, but I'm gonna use the verb sniff. Say it with me, sniff. That's when you use your nose to smell things. And I'm gonna do a picture of my big nose and I'm gonna be smelling something lovely, like maybe a flower. I also saw that those squirrels were at a location in San Rafael that some of you might know. This is a place right near the Safeway on B Street. It's where they keep all the animals. It's called Wild Care. And we'll go like this. Wild care. We'll make it bigger than the cage because it's a big location in San Rafael and the preposition we're gonna use is at, that's exactly where they are. The location is wild care. And I'm gonna put a big building and I'm gonna put SR here in case you wanna go there when we don't have to shelter in, in place. I also saw in this video that those squirrels were moving the opposite of under. They were moving over, and they were moving over those bowls that had food in them. So I'm gonna write here, over the food dish. And I'm gonna sketch it like this. So we added two new prepositional phrases, at wild care and over the food dish. Now we're gonna sing our song choosing some new parts of speech. I'm gonna choose the new two adjectives, playful and hungry. Our topic is squirrels, drink, at wild care. Sing it with me, friends. Playful, hungry squirrels, playful, hungry squirrels, playful, hungry squirrels, drink at wild care. Hello there, my environmental detective friends. You can see I found my sit spot here at Pickle Weed Park. And I took my deep breaths so that I would find myself in my calm space so that I could really be able to observe what's around me. I also took a moment to check my feelings using the feeling tree just to make sure where am I? Am I in a place to make these observations? but I'm really excited to use my new sketching skills because as I look around me, I see, these, I see these grasses, I want to call them. It makes me wonder. And I can notice, and I'm gonna draw, there are these long sticks with a curve and then they have these tassels at the end. So I'm gonna draw them and it makes me wonder, are those the seeds? Are those going to seed and become more grasses? And I'm going to write or sketch that they're brown because I know if they're brown, were they green at one time? What does that mean? 
because right next to it, there's this big leafy green. So I'm gonna draw a big leaf and it's green. Everything next to it is tan. Will this change color? So I noticed there's these lines that go out on the leaf. So I'm gonna draw these lines. I'm looking for lines to draw. I have so many questions about these two different plants just in front of me. So remember, as you're making your observations, send them to us. Your job every day is to find your sit spot, to record what you're doing, maybe it's a photo, and then to send it in one of these ways so that we can see it and share it on our show. So do that, we cannot wait to see what you're observing. And remember, go outside and explore, make sure that you have fun, but really also make sure that you're safe. Wear your mask, make sure you're in a safe place to do this. See you next time. I wonder which plants can grow both out of the water and underwater. I wonder, is the squirrel still because it is afraid or for some other reason? I wonder, how does the squirrel know where it is safe to jump? I wonder, why are the squirrel's eyes on the side of her head? I wonder, what impact do those wires have on the natural environment? I wonder, do the bridge and marina impact the plants and animals that live in the water? I wonder, what type of job do those boats do? I wonder, does being next to the road impact what kinds of animals live in the tree?